good evening and welcome to the City of Lathrop Village uh, regular meeting. Um, in accordance with the emergency orders issued by the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services, Oakland County local officials and state of Michigan legislation, which allows for electronic meetings of public bodies. Notice is hereby given that the City of Lathrop City Council will be meeting electronically using Zoom for video conferences and public access. So now we'll call to order the uh, the meet the regular meeting, and I ask that each person, each council member, announce what city, state, and county that you are in when we do our roll call. Madam Clerk, could you please do roll call? Yes, roll call, Mayor Garrett. Uh, present, and I'm in Lather Village, Michigan, Oakland County. Mayor Pro Tem Cantor. Here, Lather Village, Michigan, Oakland County. Councilmember Ferguson. Here, Lather Village, Michigan, o Oakland County. Councilmember Medley. Uh, Oldfield, uh, Suffolk County, New York. And Councilmember Siddiqui. I'm in, uh, I, I'm here in Marquette, Michigan, Marquette County. Madam Mayor, you have a quorum. Thank you. I invite everyone to say the Pledge of Allegiance. If you have a flag, you might want to face that unless oh, Scott only has 3G, so he can't do it. So I invite you to say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the, the flag, flag, the flag of, of the United, United States, States of America, America and to the Republic, Republic for which it stands, which it stands one, nation, one nation under God, uh, indivisible, indivisible with liberty, with liberty and justice, and justice for, all. for all. Thank you. Um, we do have a few changes in the agenda, um, so I would ask for the approval of the agenda with the adjustments. Yeah, um, I'll make, thank you. I'll make a motion to um, uh, accept the agenda, removing uh, item seven, uh, the disbursement reports, as we'll do that uh, in, in the next meeting. Second. It's been moved and second. Can we have a roll call? Oh, excuse me, is there any discussion? Did you want to also remove the approval of the minutes? Oh, right, the minutes weren't in there as well. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I, was, I was thinking that was part of the consent. Well, is that the only, is that the only thing that was in the consent <laughs> agenda or is it, isn't the consent agenda? That's the only thing that's under the consent agenda. Yeah, okay. So I'll, 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 I'll amend my motion to also uh, remove the consent agenda from, from tonight's meeting. Second. It's been moved and second. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, roll call please for the uh, action. Roll call. Council Member Ferguson? Yes. Mayor Garrett? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Cantor? Yes. Council Member Medley? Yes. And Council Member Siddiqui? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. And next we have a presentation, Main Street, Oakland County, from Main Street, Oakland County. Who would like to introduce? I'll introduce. Um, this is Anika Norris. She is our primary point of contact and extraordinaire from uh, Main Street, Oakland County. She has been working with us uh, really since when I started. So um, Anika has been really fantastic in helping us uh, navigate through all of our uh, all, all the 2020 challenges, um, and uh, she's been a great resource to help Corey and I uh, continue to build capacity and, uh, and, and make the DDA uh, what it is today and where we're going to go. So with that introduction, Annika, take it away, please. Thanks. Thanks, Susie. Um, so yeah, I just like to come in and and remind everybody what the Main Street program is uh, on a yearly basis and um, present the uh, certificate to the Main Street program. Um, just, uh, I won't take much of your time, I'll be real brief here, but um, just so you know, Main Street Oakland County is a coordinating program of the national Main Street program. Uh, Main Street Oakland County has been around for 21 years now and the National Main Street Program is an economic development tool 
um, that's been around for 41 years. It's based on four principles, um, design, organization, promotion, and economic vitality. Um, this program works really well with your DDA. The DDA helps provide some of the funding um, and the, the Main Street program provides the organizational tools um, and, and overlay needed to, to continue economic development in your district. Um, so to, tonight, I don't, I don't have the certificate here to you. We've given it to Susie. Oh, but I do. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, showing your hard work and dedication uh, to the Main Street program. Uh, I've gotten to work um, really closely um, with your Main Street team and your DDA team and especially Susie and Corey. Um, and I just kind of wanted to, to, to go over a, a few really cool things that they've done. And I'm sure you heard them, but it's always good to hear them again, right? Um, I'm not going to go over all of them, but you know they've been working so hard um, in the business community um, doing grant programs that the county's kind of funneled down um, to them. And the really cool thing is this year they've had to, typically within a DDA, you can't really work beyond those, that district, right? Um, but in an economic, um, I mean, we're in a pandemic, kind of a lot of rules kind of got smushed a little. Um, and, and they did a great job providing toolkits to all businesses in the community, as well as Susie stepped up and helped out. Um, was it um, Bloom or Birmingham? Beverly Hills. Beverly Hills, there we go. Yeah. Um, and a couple other communities picked up from her as well. I know a few in Southfield came up and got them from her. So she really helped to make sure um, that businesses had those things so their employees were safe and keeping people safe coming in. Um, like I said, the multiple grant programs, the patronicity program where they made a, they helped fundraise $4,000 to get a $4,000 match. Um, so many weatherization grants. And I mean, the list just kind of goes on and on. One of my favorite things that they did this year were the flowers um, along um, Southfield um, Road there and just so many great things. And I know Corey and Susie do such an amazing job reaching out to businesses and trying to make sure they have all the needs, um, their needs met, or at least help connect them to the people that can help them best. Um, so I am the support to them. And we have another four um, staff members back at the county. Um, and like I said, I don't want to take up too much of your time. I just greatly uh, appreciate working with your team. And it's so fun to watch the great things that they're doing in Lathrop Village. Shucks. Thanks, Annika. Thanks, Annika. Thank you. Well, I appreciate that. And they are doing a um, fabulous job. It's really great to um, work with them. So just to say hats off to both of them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, and the very last thing, sorry, is thank you, Council, for your support to the Main Street program. Um, it is that integral piece that, that makes the program work really well. So thanks for giving me the time. And, um, see you soon. Have a great night, Annika. Thanks for joining. Appreciate it. Take care. And um, one thing that I, I said before, and I was just only saying this because of the, we had a town, or not a town hall, but we had a, um, I guess it's kind of like a town hall at someone's house yesterday. And the one thing is about transparency and um, the fact that people would like us to go back live. And of course, because of the Delta variants, that is kind of, you know, most of us are very hesitant about doing that. But one thing that I am asking, just so we show that we are all, um, you know, here and we all are focused on, um, you know, doing the job at hand. If at least just the council people could be on camera to show that we all are participating, I would greatly appreciate it. And I think that our residents would also uh, appreciate that too. So just a little side note on that one. So we are skipping the consent agenda. We're skipping the disbursement report. So we're gonna jump down to the department reports. I'll make a motion to approve the department reports. Second. It's been moved to second. Is there any discussion for any of the reports? Hearing none. Um, roll call, please. Roll call, Mayor Garrett. Yes. 
Mayor Pro Tem Cantor. Yes. Council Member Medley. Yes. Council Member Siddiqui. Yes. And Council Member Ferguson. Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Um, now we come to a point in the meeting where we have public comments for items that are on the agenda this evening. And uh, speakers are limited to three minutes, please. Is there anyone that's in the audience that would like to speak about anything that's on the agenda tonight? Is there anyone that would like? Nope, no hands raised. Okay, thank you. Say it two more times. Anybody want to speak? <laughs> if you'd like to speak, you may raise your hand. It will let you into the meeting. Let's go around. Anybody want to speak? Okay. So first thing, we have a public hearing. The public hearing is going to be for the Cambridge Boulevard Special Assessment District. Who would like to present that? I can I can introduce it this or if Scott Ringler wants to that's fine as well but this is the second public hearing with respect to the uh, receiving council receiving objections to the role the tentative role that the clerk or I'm sorry that the treasurer did prepare a notice was mailed to all the residents that are in the intended district uh, tonight is their opportunity to object uh, to that to their inclusion in that district Thank you. Is there anyone that wants to um, be heard during the public hearing? Is there anyone in the audience that would like to be heard during the public hearing? There are no hand point, raised. Point of order, do we, do we have to officially open the public hearing first or do we just ask for people uh... And you, you should open the public hearing and then close the public hearing if there's no. I'm sorry. Well, we are opening the public hearing and now I'll start all over with my three. Thank you. <laughs> we give them another chance. Absolutely. Public hearing for the Cambridge Boulevard Special Assessment District is open. So if there's anyone that would like to speak to uh, raise your hand, uh, we will give you an opportunity to speak. If there's anyone that would like to speak during the public hearing, uh, be heard. anybody wants to speak, please let us know. Now, is there any hands whatsoever up? No hands whatsoever oh. up at this yeah. time. Thank you very much. I appreciate You're it. You're welcome. So I will close the public hearing and we'll move into our action requests. So the first one up is a resolution to certify a special assessment role for Cambridge Ditch Program. And who would like to, Scott, would you like to open that up or? Well, this is in regards sure. to the public hearing you just had, and that's for the special assessment district, which is for the drainage ditch system um, that's associated with the street project. Um, the costs are for 13 properties and it's estimated cost of $107,652. The average cost is $8,280 per property. You already have a, had the first public hearing on July 26th, and the second public hearing was today. And that role is detailed in the report. And you have the suggested motion um, in my report to you. I'll, I'll make a motion to adopt the attached resolution and confirm the special assessment role listed in Exhibit A uh, for the Cambridge Boulevard Ditch Project District with annual sums set for a 10 year period uh, for the costs and expenses to be incurred, incurred for uh, the Cambridge Road Improvement, Cambridge Ditch Improvement. Second. It's been moved and second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, roll call, please. Roll call. Mayor Pro Tem Cantor. Yes. Council Member Medley. Yes. Council Member Siddiqui? Yes. Council Member Ferguson? Yes. And Mayor Garrett? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Yes. Next is the MML Meadowbrook Liability and Property Pool Renewal Proposal. 
And we have our representative, Judy Teresian. I'm here to talk about that with you. Hi, Judy. Hi, thank you. Um, thank you for the opportunity to meet with council tonight. I appreciate the opportunity to be on the agenda. Uh, the MML liability and property pool renewal this year is 88,437. The expiring premium was $84,064. This is a premium increase of 4,373 or 5.2%. The increase uh, is actually, was actually very tempered because the city had at the time of the underwriting had two large open claims that the five-year loss ratio for the city is 271%, which is two, every dollar of premium, we have reserved $2.71 for payout. So uh, we feel that the renewal premium is more than fair. And we also had some property and the property values increased payroll increased and uh, you had more vehicles. So that alone would have created the increase. But the city of Lathrop Village is a long-term loyal member of the liability and property pool. And we're very glad to have you as members. And we really appreciate your long-term membership in your member-owned program. So I wanted to be here tonight to explain the increase and to just say hello. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody have any questions? Judy, could you also speak to the dividend return? Oh, yes. And in addition to that, thank, thank you. Um, the, the, because it's a member-owned program, the city will receive a return of surplus in the form of a dividend. So once the premium is paid the following month, I will come back with a check for $5,609. So that's one of the many advantages of being in a member-owned pool. Right, which completely offsets the, the premium increase, which is nice. Yep. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Does anyone else have any other questions? Hearing none, um, someone make the So I, I, I actually have a question. Okay. So as, as a member institution, um, we know, of course, what our claims are. Do we know how we compare to other claims from other members, how we're doing as far as a benchmark goes? Well, the way that the, the underwriter and the, uh, the risk management department at the, the pool do this, um, under, unlike the, the workers comp where it's, it's, it's a experience mod, based on your three and a half years of claims versus payroll. Um, on the liability and property pool, we cap the experience mod at 1.11 and the city is at that cap of 1.11. So you are, you're on the top end of, of the claim scale. Does that, does that answer your question? It, it, it does. If we're at the top end of that, is there anything that we can mitigate, we can do to mitigate that? As, as far, well, it, it's all based on your claims volume and, and you've had two large claims. So once those claims, um, the, the one claim was from 2016. So that will not appear on your claim, your loss ratio for next year. So that will bring your, your loss ratio down. The other claim was from uh, 2021, so that will remain on for a while. But because the loss ratio is for a five-year loss ratio, and that's what our underwriters look at. So, so the one and, large claim will come off next year. And, and Judy, thank you for that, because I wasn't aware of claim history. I'm, I'm the newest on, on the group here, so I appreciate that history. Thank you. Uh, I, I have somewhat a question. Related, oh. I was going to say somewhat related in response. We meet, I think it's annually with a representative from uh, Meadowbrook to go over our, our risk exposure relative to our properties and buildings and things of that nature. So we do an analysis and try to mitigate those situations as best we can as well. Right, and my, and my question was kind of a, an offshoot of that, Cheryl. I just wanna make sure, um, you know, our, our, our liability limits, I mean, are they pretty standard with what other cities have? Do, do you feel that those are, you know, I know they haven't probably haven't changed much from last year, but are they, you know, you think adequate to cover, you know, our, our, our perceived risk? 
Well, let, let me just give you a, a real brief history because I know you have other things to, to take care of tonight. The pool was started in 1982. Since that time, we've had two large claims. One claim was a, a wrongful death in custody and that was a $10 million claim. The second highest claim we've had since 1982 was a, uh, a tree fell on a, a young lady that the tree was scheduled to come down and for some reason it was omitted and she became a quadriplegic. So that was a $5 million claim. All other claims that we've had since 1982 have been, the settlements have been less than $5 million. The city of Lathrop Village is at $5 million. So okay. does that answer your question? That totally answers my question. Thank you so much. I try to make it as easy as possible, <laughs> because that's what I would want to know. <laughs> yep. Thank you. Are there any more questions? Okay, hearing none, uh, take a... Um, we'll make a motion to approve the renewal of the MML liability and property pool renewal proposal at the annual rate of 88,437 effective September 1st, 2021, and authorize the mayor and the city administrator to sign the related documents. Second. 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 It's been moved and seconded three times, I think. Uh, <laughs> is there any further discussion? Hearing none, roll call, please. Roll call, council member Medley. Yes. Council Member Siddiqui? Yes. Council Member Ferguson? Yes. Mayor Garrett? Yes. And Mayor Pro Tem Cantor? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. For, thank you for your time tonight. And I will get your renewal documents processed and get them to you as soon as possible. And thank more you. importantly, Judy, we're looking for our check, but you know. <laughs> So that will come the month after we get your, your, your payment. Jack. I will, I will be there. <laughs> Judy, that. Judy, did you just tell us the checks in the mail? Is that what happened just yeah, now? Yeah, that's what just no, happened. No, no, no. It it won't be in the mail. Actually, it won't be mailed. I'll deliver it. So. Oh, nice. That's even better. <laughs> appreciate Thank that you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. It. Sounds like one of those scams where you have to give a check to get a check. <sighs> well. <laughs> I'm just well, kidding, Jerry. No, no, no. Short, short reasoning is the money comes from different fund years, so uh, we can't take it off of your current year premium. We have to do it this way. Yeah, it's no Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. You as well. Thank you. Next um, is going to be the um, action item for certificate regarding the insufficiency of the petition of the residents of the Lathrop Village. And I believe, is that going to be Scott? Oh my God, we got three Scots on here. Yes, for Scott, Scott, here. <laughs> Attorney Scott Baker, since it involves a legal opinion. Okay. Yeah, so I did, I did provide a detailed written response that's in your packet. But just to highlight, the city did receive uh, a petition from the residents um, titled Petition of the Residents of Lathrop Village in connection with cannabis businesses in the city of Lathrop village uh, after review of their petition form while it did contain more than the requisite number of signatures per the charter it was deficient in many other areas uh, and ultimately based upon those deficiencies um, the clerk issued the, the uh, attached correspondence that's in your in your uh, packet with respect to the insufficiency of the petition um, based on that there's no action needed beyond this point, uh, further than just acknowledging receipt of that, which I believe council has already done and addressed it at their last regular meeting. But because it was submitted, it, it does need to appear on an agenda. So that's why it's here tonight. Thank you. So you're saying we don't need to do this motion? Or we do? You just have to do a motion to receive um, a vet's uh, opinion letter that it was insufficient. Okay. So okay. I can make that motion to affirm the determination by the city clerk that the petition is insufficient as the form of the petitions does not meet the requirement of the city of Lake Village charter or mission law for a valid initiative or referendum petition. Second. 
Thank you. It's been second. First, <laughs> it's been moved to second. Is there any discussion? Yeah, just one observation. And this question came uh, by way of the Q&A that we attended yesterday at the troops. So I believe, um, I'm not exactly sure the, the young lady's name, but she stated that the reason why the petition was so vague is because they received instructions from the city to write it that way. So I just need to maybe get some clarification from Scott and or Yvette because they were throwing names around and we wanna just capture it here. So everyone's you know giving full visibility on how they received information to write it. Did they receive information to write it? And what are the specific reasons why it was rejected? Ian, the, 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 the city doesn't have a responsibility to walk them through that process. Okay. Um, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure Scott, well, I'll, I'll let Scott confirm that, but, um, you know, there's, there's a set of, of, of laws for uh, uh, initi uh, initiatives and referendums um, from the state. And I know there is some, some language in our charter as well, um, but, uh, you know, it's the responsibility of the resident to seek their own counsel to ensure that they're following those laws or well, back in the, what, what Ian's saying, I get what he's asking though, because I recall, you know, right. being the yeah. they said the, they said that they were specifically told how to fill it out. And what was being said was that they got it directly from the clerk. And so one thing that I do know is that the clerks can't give out any type of legal um, advice whatsoever, but I would also just say that if you want the answer, probably should come from Scott or right, Robert. right, right. That's why I referenced Scott. Yeah, so, 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 Bruce, you're absolutely correct. Uh, the city does not assist in the preparation of any um, petitions, whether they be initiatory or referendum petitions. And probably the biggest flaw. I mean, there were a number of flaws, like I indicated in my my letter. Uh, dealing a lot with the formatting of the petition, but the, the biggest flaw and the most fatal flaw with it is that it a, a referendum petition has to identify the ordinance that specifically identify the ordinance that that it's seeking to repeal. There, there are at the time the petition was received, there were no adopted ordinances dealing with cannabis that could have been repealed. And an, an initiatory petition has to spell out in detail the exact ordinance language that they are seeking to initiate. And again, this petition didn't contain either language which they're seeking to initiate or language that they're seeking to repeal. So uh, that's probably the biggest flaw uh, in, in terms of city council received it, but it doesn't tell, it, it tells city council that 440 residents were opposed to cannabis in the city, but it had nothing to do with specific language. And, and that's how these petitions have to be evaluated and received. Um, very similar to uh, during the capital improvement bond, um, that petition that was circulated and submitted to council was also deficient in many of the same uh, ways as this one was. So while the city can't assist in the um, drafting of those, um, if it was something that the city had received and it was, uh, you know, uh, is something simple like you know the date was wrong or something like that that the clerk when when they accept that could review that but it's the clerk is not obligated or or actually is not supposed to provide any sort of legal advice or legal guidance with, with respect to drafting those petitions right and i think the, the the rationale behind that is because you don't want a city to to give the impression either real or perceived that they're supporting you know, a, a resolute or uh, an initiative or a referendum in one direction or the other, because we're required by law to be neutral and can't, you know, advocate for uh, an ordinance or a, a referendum or a, a initiative. And just, you know, duly noted, not that anybody might care, but when I see that 440 signatures were received and verified, I bump that up against how our elections are also. And so that to me is significant in telling you where people are, well, at least for the voting people, uh, where they are when it comes to this marijuana. Just a duly noted, except the year you got elected, Bruce, because you were the highest vote getter. But um, just on average, just, you know, my, just a thought. 
Yeah, just to expand on the, the discussion. So um, the, the 400 plus um, signatories that, that uh, participated in the, in the petition, and I think Bruce um, indicated this in the last meeting we had. So we had been discussing cannabis for several months prior to and if that research would have been done correctly, they could have at any time come to any council meeting to discuss and to really debate their concerns regarding uh, cannabis. And certainly we would have gone through another investi investigation to determine whether or not um, that was viable, that was a valid concern. But no one showed up, actually. We didn't get any pushback whatsoever until literally the last week. And at that point, all the research was completed. We had already submitted all the information. And even leading up to that last um, conference or last uh, council meeting, if anyone would have brought information that was valid stating that either um, you know, crime or loitering or robberies are happening in these cities regarding cannabis, we, we certainly would have listened to that and we certainly would have taken Take a note. So I just wanted to get that observation there. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you, Ian. I'm going to make one correction, though, to what you said. We haven't been discussing this for months. We've been discussing this for years. <laughs> well, it's two, and half, months two and a half years. Two, yeah. Okay. The, the other thing that, that I would also like to add is a lot of um, the angst that was precipitated and then brought forward in that petition. There have been many, many anonymous letters sent out to residents of Lathrop Village. There's one circulating right now that, again, um, promotes a lot of falsehoods and a lot of fear. And so um, in some of the, the discussions that I had with residents, what was told to them regarding what was going to happen in their neighborhood may have actually motivated to them to sign. And I know that there were a few people who signed petitions and later regretted their signature because they had they, they were compelled or felt something um, and hadn't given it full thought like Ian is talking about. So I also don't wanna assume that all of those signatures um, still feel the same way about the issue as they did when they received a letter um, stating that there would be murderers in their backyard if we had a, a, a cannabis uh, dispensary. And the, the letters, I'm sure many of you have received them in your mailbox. I have. Um, there's one posted right now on the Villagers uh, website where there are, you know, I think uh, I just counted 15 people um, who have all voiced that they um, find this letter and, and, and this information, um, you know, not credible. Yeah, right. great, great, great example. And another great example of that, Don, was, was you know, there was a, a big, long discussion about a month ago about there being uh, guard towers and, you know, uh, six foot tall fences surrounding our, our, you know, business, you know, businesses because of this. And, and again, that's just uh, ridiculous because our, our zoning doesn't allow any of those things, but, but it, it riled a lot of people up. Um, so but, yeah. And, and <laughs> I think even more than Ryle, it, it created fear. And so yeah, that's right. that's the thing that I'm concerned about is I do not want residents to be fearful. Right. I mean, I, I respect the residents' ex, um, right to voice their opinion. We're, we're not saying don't voice your opinion, but please root your opinions in fact. We did all the research. I'm not saying, again, I am not saying I'm pro-con or whatever. We just did the research. We presented information that was factual. And if that changed, we need to go back and see if it did change. We're, we're not rooted in um, decisions here. We're just rooted in the fact to make decisions. That's how we operate here. Any further discussion? Hearing none, roll call, please. Roll call. Roll call for it, but yes. Roll call. Council Member Siddiqui? Yes. Council Member Ferguson? Yes. Mayor Garrett? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Cantor? Yes. And Council Member Medley? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Next, we have the approval of the tree management program and funding. And this one, if I'm not mistaken, has to be also kind of, um, is it the wording that needs to be adjusted? Yeah, I got it. Okay, thank you. Okay, 
So mayor and council, and I believe uh, Rami is also on the Zoom call to go into some of the details. But as we mentioned in the study session, and we've had previous conversation in, in regards to being more proactive relative to the maintenance of our trees. And we were attempting to put that in place um, with the initial step being um, to have the DPS do a section by section assessment as well as doing the minor pruning up to, I think it's 10 feet or so off the ground that they can do and then calling in contractors to do the more extensive tree trimming and pruning of trees, as well as any remediation of diseased or fallen or diseased branches that are threat <coughs> to fall down. Um, another component would be to start a GIS inventory of the trees so that we know one where they are, especially the city trees and then their condition and if they've had any um, care so that we can then go into a three year cycle for the uh, maintenance and care of them. And Rami, I don't know if you're able to unmute. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, the tree program came about uh, due to uh, residents uh, calling in uh, about branches falling, dead branches on city trees. So we put this uh, program together uh, to where DPS would uh, dedicate every Thursday to trim uh, bre dead branches up to 12 feet and uh, to have a heart basically uh, cut down dead trees or trim trees above 12 feet. Um, heart has been uh, uh, very busy due to these storms. So we, de we decided to bring in uh, more contractors so that way we don't put our eggs in one basket. Um, one quote we uh, received from Davies uh, Tree Service and uh, we like to get more uh, on, our, uh, uh, on, on our contractors. Um, with that being said, this uh, is is successful, but Trangali is saying uh, this is going to be too much for us. So this is one uh, that uh, with Bob Z I've been ha having a conversation with, and uh, it, it's basically uh, put a halt on the uh, uh, tree uh, chipping. Thank you. Any um, further discussion? I'll, need to, I'll make a motion. Um, I'll make a motion to approve the tree management program with funding up to $16,000 from the forestry line items in both the local and, and major street funds and authorize the city administrator to con contract with Davies Tree Service uh, or others on an emergency or and others on an emergency basis um, uh, and Giffel's web serve for related services. Thank you. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any further discussion? I have a question. Do, do we need to allow for any type of bid process for this? Well, that's why we have to get more, uh, I guess, more companies in this one. It's actually was supposed to be adjusted for this. Just, I'm sorry. You said emergency, didn't you? Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. So, yeah, this is where we're going to get more. And like what Rami was saying, I'm, a, I'm kind of paraphrasing. Yes, we do need to have more um, people or more companies that would submit bids. Is that correct, um, Madam? Yes, yes, we want, we normally do business with um, JD Hart, um, but they are so backlogged, they're not able to get to some of these dangerous trees and tree branches for weeks, if not months down the road. So we need yeah. to have an emergency mechanism and contractors that we can call upon to do some of this work. And as Rami has said, even though we're trying to put in place the, um, the, the maintenance program, we there's a capacity issue relative to, to Tringali with the chipping. So we may have to look at some options relative to increasing that capacity, whether it's in-house or um, bringing in someone else to do that so that we can continue with that process. But this is just the first step to try to move that along, especially with the recent storms. You know, there's a lot of branches that we need to have immediate attention to. 
Yeah, I think this will be great. I mean, if you if you follow C Click Fix or the calls that we get into the city on a regular basis, there are a lot of tree calls, um, yeah. a lot of C Click fixes. I know because I put in a lot of them. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I think I think this this will be great, and and it'll alleviate a lot of um, issues with residents who are dissatisfied with you know the way that the trees are looking and maintained. So I think this is great. Yeah. Uh, just just a quick observation. So is there a component uh, by which a resident could um, really um, access uh, this emergency for their specific tree on their property? Because, you know, we're a tree city. So the holistic approach would be if we do have a, a tree that a resident needs help on and, and uh, Davies is in the area and they're quoting them, is there a component where we could incorporate that and then that resident would then either pay the city or Davies. So the resident would contact directly with the um the vendor and not through us. Um, we would probably only intervene if there was an emergency situation that required immediate um, attention and they weren't uh, yep. they were unable to respond. Um, some of these tree removals can be quite costly. Yep. So um, I'm sure that could be a factor for you know a property owner. Yeah, I think it's no no different than you know how what you know we get a lot of questions with respect to the, the the roads is whether or not while they're in there you know fixing my or you know cutting out my approach and replacing it can they just do the whole driveway and you know we don't prevent the contractor from doing that it's up to them and the contractor although in that situation most of the contractors don't want to do it because it slows them down on the road project but yeah you know, I mean if Davey wanted to do that I mean it's probably an incentive for them to take the the contract and give us a good price because they'll probably get side jobs because of it. Yeah. So. Yeah. Just one other question. Are we seriously thinking about bringing this in house? I think Cheryl just mentioned that in passing. Is, is that what you said? I didn't quite say that. <laughs> you were reading between the lines. <laughs> um, but one of the options may be do we rent by um, a chipper and start doing some of the work ourselves? So we'll have okay. to look at the costs associated with that as well and see if it's, you know, if it um, makes financial sense to go that route. There's always the issue of the capacity of DPS. Um, right now, they're, you know, they're trying to dedicate a portion of that one day a week to just doing this, um, this work. So that's always a consideration, but we will look at all of it holistically to see what makes the most sense for servicing the city. And I want to take a moment to applaud Rami because he basically pulled this together. I, I told him what we needed. He identified that um, the trees were a, a, an increasing issue in regards to the calls that we were getting. And he suggested the program that you have in your packet. And because of that, I've made him the point person. Yay, Rami. So, <laughs> so. That's his reward. <laughs> Thank you, Cheryl. Does he get the tree committee too? <laughs> no, it's only totally appropriate. <laughs> Rami, they're coming your way. Excellent. Uh, Susie, you're involved. <laughs> Is there any oh, other? Oh, no. uh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. What were you saying, Susie? Nothing. It's all good. I'll get back to him tomorrow. Okay. Um, is there any further discussion um, for this? Hearing none, can we do a roll call, please? Roll call, Council Member Ferguson. He just had an issue with his um, computer. Let me oh. see if I can get him on audio. Okay. Is there on my computer logged me? Out? Okay, they're just doing a roll call on the <laughs> tree management program. It's yeah, just I'm called trying. your name. Can you say yes I'm or no? Can you say yes or no? Yes. Okay. Okay. Sorry, Mayor Garrett. Yeah. Okay. Mayor Pro Tem Cantor. Yes. Council Member Medley. Yes. And Council Member Siddiqui. Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Welcome. Um, next up, we have the city administrator report. That would be you, Dr. Mitchell. You're on mute, Cheryl. Yep. <laughs> All right, thank you. Um, as we mentioned in the study session, um, probably the forefront of everyone's attention this past week has been the, the um, power outage that impacted many residents as well as City Hall. 
Um, we were out power on, and the city hall was, offices were closed to the public on Thursday and Friday. And um, we did have restoration of power late yesterday, at least partially in city hall. And the um, internet and telephone system um, came back up later this afternoon. So um, we're, we're 80 percent functioning. We still have some operations that are not functioning fully yet. And so that explained why you had the missing agenda items today because they were stored on the server, which we were unable to retrieve. The, um, we're also looking at a backup generator. Um, the generator um, gave out after a couple of days. And so the current one needs to be repaired, but we were already looking at a full building um, generator so that we can remain operational since these incidents seem to be ongoing and reoccurring frequently. The um, audit is underway. Pam is, has been having a wonderful time um, working with the auditors, gathering all the information, and especially when they have a whole list of things they need and you don't have computer access, I won't tell you the language that she used, but, <laughs> but we're making it work as best we can in their understanding. Um, the website is still in the process of, it's on the final legs of being updated, it's in the, what they call the review, the quality assessment period. So we're going through that and hopefully she'll be live um, shortly. The um, home warranty service that's available through our partnership through the National League of Cities with HomeServe, um, they will be sending out their, their fall campaign of letters to residents who have not yet signed up for the water service um, coverage. And if you recall, I think that's for just the water service, I think it's a little about 850. I'm sorry, I can't read. 6.59 a month um, and for each service call, they would um, cover up to 8,500. So if you've ever had an incident with a, your water line needing it repaired, you, you know those that's probably worth taking a close look at. Um, we also re uh, remind residents to look at their home um, owner's policy to make certain it's not already covered, but um, that is definitely an asset. And um, Council member Ferguson just said that he's on with through his phone. Okay. And Hello, I'm on. Okay, very good. No um, video though. Sorry. So the general election is going to be November 2nd. And um, as we discussed in the um, council session, the study session, that we will have the offices closed to make certain that um, we'll have an as safe an environment as possible and to um, allow for a better flow of the residents through the two precincts. And the charter amendment that we had requested has been approved by the governor and the attorney general. So that will be on the ballot on November 2nd. And that's essentially to allow for the presentation of the budget and the adoption of the budget to be moved forward one month. So it will move from a presentation in April to a presentation in May and for council's adoption to be moved to the month of June. Uh, cannabis is in the process. <laughs> so the two ordinances have been adopted and the next step is for council to be looking at the application process and scoring matrix. And you ask for that to be on your um, September, I think it's 13th study session, along with a draft of the resolution so that it can move forward. Assuming that everyone agrees. And the police were involved with the bike safety rodeo. So that was a lot of fun for a number of um, youngsters. And it was in conjunction with a number of community organizations in the city of Southfield Police and Fire Department as well. There has been increased traffic noted on um, Lincoln Drive. So I wanted you to know that the police department is aware of that. Um, they have increased um, patrols over there as well as I think they were trying to get the radar sign um, system placed over there to help monitor that situation. And we are going to be sending off another young talented person, Chris Clough has um, decided to pursue his career as a historian and he looks to be a teacher one day. And um, so he's finishing up his master's degree. So he wants to start working on that on a full-time basis. So his last day is going to be the end of this month. And in celebration of all his hard work and his um, fond farewell, 
there's going to be a park cleanup at Golden Gate Park. And that's going to be on August 25th from 5 to 8 p.m. He says to bring gloves. And if you want, you can bring vegan treats. The summer concert for Charles and Gwen Scales from last week was called off because of the weather. It's being rescheduled to this Wednesday. I think that's the 18th at 7 o'clock. And hopefully the weather will hold up. But if not, we're planning to move it to the community room. There will be a capacity limit of 70 attendees. And um, also, we are hoping to have it live streaming of the concert. So if you can't make the concert, it should be live streamed on, on um, Facebook Live. So that will be exciting to get that launched as well. And in regards to staffing of the recreation, we're already in um, conversations with existing staff on how they can assume some of the responsibilities that were um, under Chris's um, Helm, as well as um, conversation with the city of Southfield in regards to recreational programming and enrichment classes. The side um, Cheryl, I just, I just wanted to go back and ask, um, I've never heard the word vegan and treat used together. And so I'm not really sure. <laughs> I'm not really I'm, sure how those go together. I've had a vegan Coney Island that nobody believes I'm going to bring them in, I swear. <laughs> so they're made with carrots. So that, as I, I'm, on a different so, so um yeah you can so the sidewalk project if you recall the phase one of the three-year project starts with the southfield corridor business corridor and then the residential area south of i-696 11 mile on both the east and west side of southfield road so they're starting this week with the horizontal um, saw cutting. And then about two weeks later, they should be starting with the actual replacement and removal of that. The residents will be notified of the actual cost and allowed to either pay the full amount um, when they get the invoice and by December 1st, or they can go into a payment plan. And there's also a, I think there's a $50 administrative fee and um, there is a program in place for those who um, fit the qualifications for hardship. The planning and DDA meetings for this month both have been canceled and we have been um, awarded a continued certification to the redevelopment ready communities, which is quite an accomplishment. I want to thank Susie in particular, and the planning commission and Scott and everyone from the planning commission and council members who played a role in making certain that all those component parts move forward so that we could get that certification and it's good through 2023. And that coincides with our five-year master plan cycle. So that will be a little bit easier to keep track of going forward. One of the things I may not have talked a lot about is um, a requirement that we had for the America's Water Infrastructure Act, AWIA. And they required us to have an emergency response plan relative to our water systems. So we, this was a requirement of uh, all um, communities that have these systems. So we worked through SACWA and they had a, um, a, a grant and contract with Hubble, Roth and Clark. So we worked with them and Scott Ringler was very much involved in making certain that we gathered the information necessary to put forward our ERP plan to the US EPA. I have a lot of initials for this. And um, so it, it helps to improve our resilience, including physical security and cyber security of the system. So that was being, that was submitted. Um, it was due December 31st and it needs to be updated every five years. So we're in compliance with that. The new dates for SACRA for the collection dates, um, they were just approved. So we have those dates for 2022 and 2023 and we will um, include those in the fall uh, winter edition of the Your Town. And the fall edition, by the way, should be going to press very soon. And because um, there were some questions in regards to some of the holidays that don't fall on the Monday, you know, when do you get your trash collected? So the earlier we can get that information out to, to residents, I think that will help. Uh, one of the complaints we received on um, 11 mile service drive was that big hump. When you turn off the of Southfield Road, there was a big hump there. So that's been smoothed out. So we were able to get that addressed and I provided the um, construction updates in your packet as well. And I think that's all I have. 
Thank you. That was a lot. <laughs> city administrator, do you, oh, excuse me, city attorney, do you have um, any reports? I'm I sorry. Can, you, can I ask a question about Cheryl's report? Yep. So I just didn't know what the strategy. So you said um, Chris is leaving. Um, we were making a decision to add some of his responsibilities to a current employee and shift some to Southfield. Is that because of the nature mm -hmm. of the work and we're going into fall and, and maybe winter? Is it a cost saving measure? Is it because of COVID? I'm just not sure what that strategy is. Okay. So and I'm also not sure if that's an appropriate question for here, but I just wanted to ask. I will be bringing back the reorganization um, proposal um, to you next month, but I just wanted to give you a heads up right now in regards to the staffing. So as um, mentioned, some of the tree aspects might have normally fallen under parks, sort of, kind of. Um, the building maintenance and security issues, there's um, the programming and special events. So those are some of the things that I see us reassigning to existing staff and some of those additional responsibilities are going to probably come along with some additional compensation because you can't keep asking people to do more without recognizing that their time is worth something. So I'll bring that proposal back to you at the next meeting. And then other elements such as the recreation programming part I've had initial conversation with Southfield in regards to doing those. But the special events, it seemed like it falls very neatly into having the DDA assume some of them because most of the events actually happen right here in the DDA district. Um, so we're already having those conversations on what that might look like. Um, city attorney. Uh, nothing for me tonight. Thank you. Um, we have the reports of boards, commissions, and committees, the charter amendment. Um, we have the governor, governor Whitmer's approval of the proposed amendment attached. Um, but is there any boards, commissions, or committees that want to report out? Nothing from the infrastructure or planning commission. Thank you. Do we Ellie, want yeah. I know mine doesn't fit under any of those, but I would like to talk about the water billings that went out this month. Sure. Oh, good idea. I have some questions for you anyway, but go ahead. Thank you. Okay. During the audit is a very busy time and I made an error on the water bills. So I had to reprint the water bills. You're going to notice that all your water bills do say zeros and past balance dues. Those are actually your current balance. Once you, you journalize and you go back to print the bills, the bills will start like they're starting over again, like the next month bills so that's why you're showing the previous balances you can go out to our website under bsna and you can see your water bill and what your usage is out there um, and if you have any questions you're more than welcome to call me at 248-557-2600 extension 227 because i have been doing the water billing also so is there any questions or anything that you want answered in regards to that no, I'm good. Anyone else? I just wanted to get that out there for the residents because we have had calls already about people having zero usage and things like that on their bills so and past balances. So I wanted to make sure that I did clarify that, that it was an error during the audit time and <laughs> I'm very busy, so. Understood, thank you. Um, and then my question was, should we read the... Uh, the letter, but that's just a letter that is um, saying that the governor did uh, approve, as, well, she was responding to the request for approval of a proposed charter amendment for the city of Lathrop Village. Yep. And um, basically is that she... Approved it. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm trying to, I mean, I got that because it does say... I, I governor approval letter right there. So I was just wondering if there was some other wording that I need to say in there. Um, so moving on to unfinished or new business. Uh, I got a couple things. Is that um, new business or is that council comments? Uh, I can I can I can hold them to council comments. It, it, it could fit in either place. I'll, I'll hold them to council comments. Okay, I just want to be able to give um, public uh, opportunity to talk yeah either way 
Okay. Um, so next we have the public comments is open. Um, that basically you can ask, uh, well, you can, you can comment <laughs> about whatever you would like to. So is there anyone that would like to speak? Is there anyone that would like to speak? Is anyone's hand up, Calda? No hand raised. Okay, and last time, is, it, is there anyone that would like to speak during the public comment? Okay, so moving on to the mayor and council comments. Go ahead, Bruce, if you wanted to say. All right, I'll start. Uh, for, first thing I wanna mention, um, so uh, we've mentioned a couple of times we had the kind of a town hall at, at a resident's house yesterday. And, um, I want to pass on some comments um, to the city administration. Um, I stayed after and was talking with a group of people and they had nothing but positive and great things to say about you, talking about what quality individuals you guys are and uh, what a great job you do. And uh, one, one went as far to say that I don't know how any of you guys have the, you guys must have thick skin because you you stay in your job despite, you know, everybody yelling at you and, you know, you're the the, 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 the source of people's venting, but uh, they had nothing but glowing comments. So I just wanted to wanted to pass that on because I thought it was, uh, it's, it's good for you guys to hear that you're doing a great job because we think you're doing a great job. So a um, couple of minor things. Um, we had talked about a year ago uh, and, and I, I haven't heard anything in a while on it uh, about putting in this, this kind of I got reminded of this at the at the meeting yesterday and talking to some residents afterwards, um, you know, who were talking about uh, how you know people drive right through Lather Village and think it's Southfield. Um, have we done anything further about trying to put uh, you know City of Lather Village up on the you know the, the the front of the building like we had talked about on the triangle above the column, Cheryl? That would be the DDA, if I'm not mistaken, Susie. Well, I mean, you know, I keep asking my friend, like, hey, dude, what's the, what's, what, what can we do? And we, I think we need to, he's being a crummy friend. So um, we need to find somebody else. Yeah. And it doesn't necessarily have to be the DDA. I mean, we can do it ourselves I and mean, we can have our DPS do it if we just. I know. get that, but we had discussed it in the DDA. Oh, about got it. Got it. Design on. Got it. Yeah. Um, Okay, and then uh, I would like to say though that you know I think the flower baskets do a pretty nice job of saying that we are not Southfield because they don't have them. They do. anywhere on Southfield Road. Just saying, neither does Beverly Hills for that matter. Yeah, uh, and then just I, I'm just looking out my window. Do, were lawn bags picked up today? Because I got about twenty of them in front of my house that weren't picked up. So just they're still them. running. They're still running. Okay, great. Yep. They have. Um, I just saw. I just heard the truck go through again. Excellent. Okay. And then this one was, was an idea uh, a little bit different, but I, I, it might be something to think about. You'll probably laugh at me, but um, you know, as, as I'm out biking from one community to, to another, you know, every other day, I, I run across garbage trucks constantly and we see a lot of, or I see a lot of, of garbage trucks doing things that they're not supposed to in terms of doing the zigzag pattern and blocking the road. And I know Southfield has had a lot of problems with that. Um, some of their meetings that I attended there, they were actually threatening to get rid of their their vendor uh, because of the fact that they can, were continually blocking the road and, and doing that kind of zigzag pattern instead of going up one side of the street and the other side of the street. So the, the thought occurred to me whether or not there's a possibility to, similar to what, what the Postal Service has done and where they put all the mailboxes on one side, where could we put all of our garbage on one, one side of the street? So, you know, for the residents who are on the opposite side of the street, it's an extra 10 feet that they're going to have to pull their garbage out. But what that could potentially do is make it so that Tringali um, doesn't have to make two laps through the entire city. And they can make one lap, which would allow them, A, to get the garbage out of there faster, and it was, and B, uh, potentially save them, you know, gas, time, a considerable amount of time because they don't have to make that second lap. Um, and we could potentially ask them in the future or even, you know, on, an, on our existing contract to lower the, the cost of the contract because we would be saving them a considerable amount of money. Well, let me, uh, let me first respond to your question and then uh, give the observation. So right now, because our streets aren't that wide, they typically don't do the zigzag. They actually pull up 
on the correct side on on some occasion they do that on some on some occasion they pull up on the incorrect side but then they collect on both sides right but your observation is correct if we we have enough space to do one side where everyone would just put their garbage on one side and we would have to if if it's possible we would have to decide which side that is obviously it would be the right side because the truck <laughs> would come right. down on the right side right and yes it would it would save on fuel it would save on time and and probably personnel because you know they're having issues with with personnel right so it could save them some money and it could save time and it could save us some money well and the other so thing that it would do the other thing it would do is is it would um it would it would widen the streets for to, you know on on, right. on sunday and monday so right you know, you don't have garbage on both sides so people would, would be easier matriculating our streets would be a lot easier as well right and let me just add to the observation so if we wanted to do a trial run i think the trial run would probably well it should happen on lathrop boulevard because that's the longest stretch and then you wouldn't have any you know disconnect right and so if you wanted to see how it really worked you can use lathrop boulevard as a as a guinea pig basically yeah so that's that, that's a good idea yeah so Bruce, I really like this idea. I do want to offer like one counterpoint to that. Um, if my neighbor pulls their trash over to my side and it falls over, <laughs> um, am I responsible for cleaning that up because it's on my side? And so the counterpoint that I would offer to, to make your solution work is some way where we alternated weeks. So like basically one week it's on this side of the street and the other week it's on that side, if we could do that because Am I always going to be responsible for hosting my neighbor's trash if I happen to live on the side of the street that gets picked? And so I just, you know, we've, we've had a lot of fussing about bike signs. So I just want to make sure that right. that we're, you know, we're, we're thinking about who's going to host the, the trash on Sunday night. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I think there's things to, to work out or, yes. or even, even, you know, uh, you know, you could do it by month. So that way it wouldn't right. use people or, or, you know, January through you know, June. I, I think it's a, I think it's a great idea. I just I just want to yeah. you know, yeah. I, and and I would support it. I think I really like that. Sure, can so we Dawn, possibly I like talk that. to Tringali about that and see if there's there's an option to maybe do a, a a trial run. But you do also understand that we wouldn't we would not um, be able to negotiate a contract because we don't directly contract with Tringali. You do know, right? Because we we contract through Sakra. Oh, we did well. Well, yeah, forgot about that. Yeah, but but maybe there's maybe there's an opportunity to do it in multiple communities, you know. And we can do it with we can do it with recycling as well. Right. I mean, I I would think if I was Tringali, I would love this idea because it would make their lives a lot easier. I would think that is. I'll definitely ask um, and see what that might look like. There's always the issue of people not remembering or not participating or neighbors that somehow don't quite get along and don't want someone else's container in front of their house or blocking their parking space. I mean, there's other things. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's some, there's, <laughs> it's definitely worth inquiring to see if we could do a trial run and if that works. Yeah, I mean, there's some things that we would have to figure out, but it, it I mean, on the surface, it seems like it could save time, money. I mean, make our streets more navigable, if that's a word. Um, yeah. So. Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, visually, if we're thinking about the logistics, if you used Lathrop Boulevard as a as a guinea pig, right? So they would only they would either come in one way and then exit the 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 other way, make a right turn on Eleven Mile, then make another right turn on Southfield, go right back to Sakura and dump and come back again. So <laughs> that that could work. I mean, it's I, I like Don's component of the Canadian effect because they have alternate alternating alternating parking in canada right so i think on the off you know every other month they change sides on the street so that could work also yeah and i yes. just said you could do it with odd and even street numbers that's probably right. the yeah. easiest yeah. way right yeah exactly anything makes else? sense i think that's all i have thank you anyone else that has um any comments from council? Yeah, I have a couple of things. So I want to echo what Bruce said. There was a couple of uh, Q&A uh, participants yesterday that 
express appreciation for the staff and city manager. And I uh, just want to communicate that to you all. You are doing a good job, all of you. And, you know, in particular, um, with all the stress of everything happening with COVID, you really have kept the city running and you don't get enough credit for it. So uh, those people that walked up to us and, and said that, that was really uh, grateful. I was grateful for it and, and appreciative for sure. So just know that um, the good, the bad and the ugly are watching. So just make sure you, you keep them in equal standing, okay? Don't, uh, don't think you hear a negative comment and it, it, it's everything, it's everyone saying that. Uh, the other observation, so we had the Lathrop Village Summer Stroll yesterday. And for those of you who don't know what that is, we basically had live music at designated houses, either on the, the front lawn or in the backyard. Uh, this was the ninth year we did that. And I wanted to express my appreciation to Adam Laurie, who throughout this COVID issue, managed to pull it off, managed to book the bands, managed to organize it through uh, almost no power at three houses that he had booked initially. We, he had to really <laughs> reschedule or rearrange to make this thing kick off right yesterday. And for that, I appreciate that. Also, I want to extend appreciation to Kim Hodge, who actually was the originating idea for the stroll. So Kim went to Ann Arbor and saw that Ann Arbor had something going on like that. And she brought it back to Lathrop nine years ago. And we kind of incorporated it, hoping that uh, we would do something right. And in the end, we've, we've now done it for nine years. So next year will be the 10th anniversary of the summer stroll. Um, and I plan on giving you know, 50, 80%, whatever it's going to take to make it a little bit larger. We've got some ideas that we've got to kick around with the committee and certainly um, council, new or old, whoever is going to be in office, we will certainly approach the, those individuals. And, and as, a, as an observation, so the stroll is not a, a, a city sponsored event, right? This is an extracurricular event that uh, residents love. And over the last couple of years, the city has embraced it. And I want residents to continue to embrace it and expand upon it because this really is your festival is free. We don't ask for anything other than to show up and relax on a Sunday. So keep that in mind uh, for the 10 year anniversary. Uh, the, the, the third thing I want to talk about is the warm line where last month I brought some information to you regarding uh, a crisis uh, hotline. Uh, that's sponsored by the state. Wanted to find out if we can incorporate that and at the same time make sure that the residents are aware of the warm line and where to access the link and the phone number and all that. So um, if someone could comment on that. And then lastly, uh, I just want to express my appreciation to Chris, Chris Clug. Um, he's done a tremendous job out there. I've already um, expressed my appreciation to him personally and I want to say it here officially that he did a really good job maintaining parks and recreation. He also brought great ideas to this city and he will be missed. And I just wanted him to know that um, his energy, the way he went about his daily business with the city, with the city manager and also volunteers, um, it's well-respected. And if that's any indication of him pivoting to a new career, then certainly someone's going to benefit from, from his energy. So I appreciate it. Is there any other comments? Um, so just before um, we adjourn, um, Tim, you. I wanted to um, ask you about, would you have an idea of why residents are being moved from homestead to non-homestead? Or have they just always been non-homestead and never realized it? Because I do have one that I need to send to you. Most of them have been in their houses a long time that we're finding and they didn't, when they were originally, when the homestead came out back in 94 and that, they never filed okay. at that time. That's what we're finding a lot of them because they come up and say, I've been in my house 25 years. And so um, they sent out a letter to the uh, um, 
the building department sent out a letter to find out which homes were rentals and non rentals. So that's why we're getting a bunch of the people coming in finally now and they're doing their they're filing their homestead paperwork and I'm um, updating it on the computer sending it off to the county so that we get their 100% homestead on their property. But um, as I've said before, the rates here in Lathrop have been the same for many, many years because we, you guys have always had a non-homestead. Homestead rates have been exactly the same. They've only changed probably within the last three years by um, probably a mill, mill and a half. So it's been very close. Um, the county is looking at those. And if the county, when they do anything, they'll go back three years on it. That's the okay. furthest they can go back, so. Okay, well, I have one um, to send to you if you could update that, because um, I think that people are, I don't know why, it, I, I don't understand why it's just now noticing it or, or seeing it, so. Um, That's fine, yeah. I'll take care of it. Okay, thank you so much, I appreciate yep. that. Um, also, um, Saturday, which I was very disappointed that no one from council came, but that's okay for the um, car show. It was absolutely um, uh, magnificent, actually. It I was, was there. Uh, what'd you say? I, I was there. I walked oh, I apologize. I'm, <laughs> I can apologize, but um, it was wonderful. I mean, it was um, just, we had a little thing that happened. So some of the cars didn't get there until maybe until um one o'clock um but it was pretty it was pretty full and the vendors being there food trucks being there is really good and um you know hopefully the council that gets sworn in next will will allow them to um do it again uh next year so that that was that was extremely fun um I also suggested uh, at this, I, I don't know what to call it, town hall or, or whatever the, that was offered to us to come by. Um, Q &A. Have, I'm sorry. Uh, Q&A. Okay. Um, so um, to offer to do something like that again, and I'm, I'm giving that to the rest of the um, residents, if you want to have a discussion um, in your yard with us, you know, you can let us know. Really can't discuss what's on the agenda or, so, you know, item that needs to be, um, action needs to be taken on. But the fact is, uh, Bruce and I have done uh, home visits and, and had uh, groups there. The fact is, is that I, I get a little sensitive regarding the whole transparency and that we're not approachable when I know um, that we have been extending ways to be able to be with the public um, or to be with our residents. And, and sincerely, if you have a question, you can email any of us. Um, I think we all also have a um, phone extension with vo voice phone on it. I know that mine is a little jacked up right now that I need to um, correct the uh, voicemail, but nonetheless, I do respond to my uh, emails within a 24 hour uh, period. Um, and then also to the chagrin of everybody on this call, if there's something that was egregious on Facebook that I do um, respond to um, those also. But I just want to, you know, reiterate from some of the things that I have seen and, and or I'm receiving is that we are available. And I know that there were people last night that was saying that they were going to run on the fact that they are going to be available, um, you know, full time and, and all the time. And I think that your current council sitting is available also. The fact is, it's just a little bit different. Most of us do have to work also to, you know, we have to make a living. But I know that most of the people that are on council right now, they do a hell of a job of um, responding and the fact of balancing both a full-time job, families, traveling, and everything else, um, plus making sure that this city is running. And the city, I will say without a doubt is running very, very well. This staff has done an amazing job. This council has done an amazing job. And to think that this is really all and within a six year period, um, it is, you, you've done an amazing job. And so I do say kudos to um, everybody actually on the call for that. I know that we are not gonna always make everyone happy, but I was always told from my grandparents, if you made everybody happy, you're doing something wrong. So as pissed off as everybody is with us, we've been doing a hell of a job, obviously. So 
<laughs> I just want to say uh, thank you for that. Um, I'm trying to think if there was anything that is coming up. Oh, for the 27th, right? The 27th is our summer in the village um, uh, from six to eight. And that we're going to be doing the backpack giveaway again. Um, so if you uh, want to be a part of that, um, and then because it's also just say to reiterate what everybody else is saying, Chris has done a hell of a job. I really hate that we um, have to keep turning over our parks and recs person because um, it seems like right when we get something going, the person leaves. So um, who knows about that? And I think that I have come to all that I need to say this evening. And that if um, no one else has any, uh, of course, I know. Kelly, oh. I want to. <laughs> I, I just want to I just want to reiterate what you're saying because people um, I, I think people have all different forms of communication and you and I did the 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 thing at Panera but there are a lot of people who communicate via Facebook Messenger via email via that and so I think our residents are actually really engaged and maybe that's because I'm new and naive. Um, but, but I'm hearing from a lot of them regarding questions, support, you know, different things that are going on. And so I, I think you're exactly right. I think that, that this council is very approachable. So, yeah. And I also um, have also heard, um, and I, I mentioned this earlier about the lemonade event. So I had a couple people mention that they just thought that was very kind. Yeah, it Thank is. I, I forgot Thank something. You. I'm sorry, Mayor Garrett. Um, completely forgot um, what I was gonna say, but uh, <laughs> perception is not reality when it comes to uh, how council is operating. Cause uh, you know, we, we are engaged in our perspective quadrants as well as when we get to the city, we really don't um, ignore people. We're actually approachable. I mean, it may not be uh, some of the, the the questions or concerns that come to us that we may have answers to, but we certainly try to get answers back. So just wanted to uh, communicate that. And uh, if I can remember what I had to ask you, I will before we hang up. Um, Cheryl, you had something? Yes, I, I wanted to mention in regards to the back to school, um, in light of the fact that um, children under the age of 12 are not yet able to be vaccinated, it, I am anticipating that the policy for that day is going to be for mandatory face coverings. Okay. So as you were sharing the information about the event to let people know that um, there will be a face covering required event. And um, in regards to the transparency, um, as you're going out in the community, especially, please remind people of all the various ways they can get information. Um, many of them electronic, and I know not everyone is on the internet, but you know we do post a lot of information on our website, on Facebook, on the Villagers Facebook, as well as the weekly e-newsletter and um, the Your Town that goes out quarterly. And also there's a summary every month in the Southfield Sun of the actions taken by city council. So there's a number of ways and there's information that's left in the lobby. So there's a number of ways to get information if you're interested in assessing it. And um, all the staff is available by email and by um, telephone as well, or just dropping in to ask questions. So we, we want to work with our community to make certain that they have the information they need um, in response to their questions or just to understand what programs and policies and programs are available to them. And so they can access the information as best they can. Thank you. Ian, did you remember what you wanted to say? Yes, I'm going to be working with Corey to uh, finalize a bike tour of Lathrop Village in October. We initially wanted to do it in September, but we had to reschedule. So um, we're working towards that. And of course, you've got the right person on the job. That would be Corey. I'm just, uh, I'm just a wingman helping her. So uh, we'll be approaching all of you to give more updates and hopefully finalize. So just stay tuned and hopefully you're in town. So Bruce, uh, don't make any plans for October. <laughs> Entire month. <laughs> I will I will be more than happy to attend if I am in town. Okay, thanks. All right. Well, if uh, we don't have uh, Excuse any... me, Mayor Gary, you do have a question um, in the chat. Oh, okay, I'll see the chat. Is there a plan or timing when city council will be face-to-face -face at city hall? So I don't even see that. Okay, 
Um, the way that uh, I believe, and correct me, Scott Baker, this um, ordinance can stay in place until the end of the year, correct, of uh, doing it virtually? That's correct. Unless there's some uh, changes at the state level, it would resume January 1st. Right. And so um, for me, is, you know, and, and I might be speaking out of turn for everyone else, um, I think once we get this, uh, the COVID numbers down, and um, also, um, especially with this Delta variant, I, I have no idea of when we're going to be going back into um, to a live well, this is live, but face to face, which I find that, you know, that's an interesting question because even when we were face to face, we never really, we never had anybody in the audience. But um, so I can't answer that question. Um, it depends on what the, uh, what the laws are, I guess. Well, and Kelly, we were face to face last month. I mean, many of us were there. Yeah. We were in the chamber. Yeah, yeah, right. Exactly. Exactly. Right. Well, I can only speak for myself, even if that changes. Uh, for the state, if they mandate that we go back, I will not be in person at all. I'm just being very honest because I'm the only person working as I stated yesterday in the town hall. And um, I'm tending to some elderly relatives in excess of 88 years. So I will not put them in jeopardy nor will I put myself in jeopardy. So um, I hope I answered your I know I didn't truly answer the question, but I hope I answered it to the best of my ability. And that is, I don't know, it depends on whether we are forced. And of course, if we are forced to go back um, in the office, we'll have to put protocols in place to make sure that everybody is safe, um, which also means limiting the people that would be in the audience. So um, yeah, that's, that's it. So um, is there anything else from anyone? Hearing none, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. It's been moved a second. You all have a great evening and stay safe. Have a good Thank night, you. Everybody. Uh, good night, everyone. Good night.